This presentation shows an example of a corporate valuation model in the specific case of merger valuation. And as you can see here, the value of a firm's operations again is the present value of the projected free cash flows over the horizon. So this tells us that there are two key ingredients we need in this analysis. We're going to need to estimate the free cash flows and then secondly, we're going to need to estimate the weighted average cost of capital of the target firm. So now quickly moving into the example. Uh, for this presentation is the case of Taesung Incorporated. So go ahead and read up this case and here's a quick summary of it. Here Taesung is the uh, firm making the tender offer and Goodman is the target firm. Now for this analysis cost of debt for Goodman is 7% and that's the yield to maturity on its debt, long-term debt tax rate to use is 40 percent and so if you adjust this cost of debt for taxes the after-tax cost of debt comes out to be 4.20 percent which is the cost of debt of 7 percent multiplied by 1 minus 40 percent. The beta of the target firm is 2 meaning that this stock is twice as volatile as the market. The risk premium to use in this analysis which is the difference between the market return and the risk-free interest rate is 7%. For purposes of the capital asset pricing model, CAPM, we're going to use a risk-free interest rate of 5%, which is the estimated yield to maturity on 10-year Treasury bonds. And if you use the CAPM to calculate, therefore, the cost of equity is going to come out to be 19%. That calculation would be equal to the risk-free interest rate of 5%. Added, we add that to the risk premium of the stock. The risk premium of the stock is going to be the market risk premium of 7% multiplied by the beta of the stock. So that comes out to be 14%. And if you add that 14% to this 5%, you get the CAPM cost of equity of 19%. The target firm's debt ratio is 40% and therefore equity ratio is 60%. And then putting all these into the weighted average cost of capital formula, which you see down here, we find that the target firm's WAC is 13.08%. So continuing, in this example, we're, we're going to assume that revenues will grow at the rate, annual rate of 5%. Beyond five years, we're going to assume a constant growth rate of 3.5%. The cost of goods sold as a percent of revenues is projected to be 60% and operating expenses as a percent of revenues is 18%. Straight line depreciation provides us with annual depreciation expenses of $850 per year over the next uh, five years. So this is all given. And the WAC, which we already have calculated, is 13.08%. Tax rate again is 40%. Now, networking capital as a percent of sales for this ex in this example is 20%. And we're going to assume capital expenditure per year of 1500 so with these we go into the analysis so now here current sales is 9434 uh, 9434 right here so now this is given and then based I go back on this information of revenue growth of 5% we're gonna grow this by 5% per year and that's how we get these values right here Cost of goods sold as a percent of sales requires that we take 60% of these projected sales and that's how we get these, uh, co these cost of goods sold amounts right here. Then the difference is gross profits. Now operating expenses except depreciation as a percent of sales is 18%. So taking 18% of these projected revenues we have these values that you see right here. We are giving uh, annual depreciation of 850 bucks. So that's what we present right there. If we net those, we find the firm's operating income, earnings before interest and taxes in this case. Subtracting taxes, which is 40% of each of these amounts, we find no PAT, which is the after-tax EBIT. So these are 
the amounts. If we add back depreciation, we find what's called operating cash flow. Operating cash flow, which you see down here, is equal to no pad plus depreciation. And then in the next uh, sequence of the analysis, we determine the additional investment in networking capital. The investment in networking capital is estimated to be 20% of revenues. So 20% of these revenues that you see up here will give us these values that you see down here. So as you can see, the incremental investment in networking capital will be the difference between the adjacent figures. So this 1981 is greater than 1887 by 94. The difference between 2080 and this 1981 is 99, and the beat goes on for all the next uh, five years. Now we are told that capital expansion will amount to 1500 per year. So these are gross amounts, and therefore, if you add these two together, you find the total additional investments in operating capital which is again equal to the change in networking capital that we have already estimated right here and the additional capital expansion that is given in the case. So armed with these two sets of data, our notepad up here and the additional investments in operating capital, we find free cash flow. So our free cash flow, therefore, is, a, is the difference between operating cash flow, which you see up here, and the total capital expansion amount, which you see down here. So subtracting this 1594 from 1648, we find 53. Subtracting this 1599 from 1713, we find this 114, etc. So now, at the end of the horizon, at the end of the five years in this analysis, we're going to have to find the horizon value using the constant growth model, which we are told, if I go back here, to assume future constant growth rate to be about three, uh, to be 3.5 percent. We calculate that to be 3,400. So this is the constant growth valuation formula. We plug and play. Free cash flow at the end of five years is 315, which you see down here. And then we multiply that by 1 plus the constant growth rate of 3.5% and divide that by the difference between the WAC of 13.08% and the growth rate of 3.5%. And that's how we're going to get this 3400 that you see down here. And therefore, the total cash flow which would include the horizon value of 3400 would be these values right here so that in the fifth and final year we find the total cash flow to be 3714 all we now have to do is to find the value of the firm's operations by taking the present value of these final cash flows that you see at the bottom i remind you of the model right here the corporate valuation model right here so substituting substituting these values in the model and discounting using the 13.08 percent weighted average cost of capital we're gonna get 2417 as the value of the firm's operations and that's it really now typically in value of operate in uh, corporate valuation if the firm has any non operating assets then we're going to have to add the current value of those non-operating assets to the value of operations to get the final value of the firm. But in the absence of those, value of operations automatically becomes the value, the estimated intrinsic value of the firm. We use the word intrinsic to denote the fact that this is the intrinsic valuation model since it um, relies on the uh, estimated values of the firm's free cash flows going forward. So in conclusion, I note here though that as elegant as the corporate valuation model is, that um, it does have a nagging problem. You see, as I note here, 
In a merger valuation especially, the capital structure of the target firm tends to change rapidly, especially in the first few years of uh, the merger. And this is going to cause WAC of that target firm not to be constant, but rather to change from year to year. Now, if I go back here, you see that the corporate valuation approach relies on the assumption that WAC has to be the same from year to year. In this example, 13.8%. But what if the target firm would be, the, this acquisition would be financed using a lot of debts which the um, acquirer intends to pay off fairly rapidly in the early years of the, of the acquisition. If that happens, which oftentimes is the case, then the firm's debt ratio is going to change from year to year. And if it changes from year to year, again going back here, that means that this WAC, if WD changes from year to year, that means that um, the weighted average cost of capital would not be the same from year to year. So changes in capital structure, essentially the debt ratio would cause the firm's WAC not to be the same. And if it isn't going to be the same, then assuming that the denominator here is going to be the same going forward um, would be a little um, um, how shall I put it? Presumptuous, actually. So that's how I wrap that up here, that if capital structure is not constant, it is difficult to use the corporate valuation approach because it relies on a constant weighted average cost of capital and not one that changes from year to year. So because of this little problem, um, in many merger analysis, we're going to use a more robust approach called the Adjusted Present Value Model discussed in a different video presentation. Thank you.